This is Echo Blade, a Kingsfield clone with some unique ideas, and this will be my review of Echo Blade. As previously mentioned, Echo Blade is a Kingsfield clone. However, it does not hide this. In fact, it embraces it. What makes Echo Blade unique is in its visual design, which is a bold and minimalistic choice. This abstract style is meant to simulate blindness, which in return gives a feeling of overwhelming darkness. There is a silver lining, however. The only way to see anything is by producing sound. Now much like other Kingsfield clones, dungeon crawling, puzzle solving, trap evasion, and fighting various types of enemies is present, much to the same as the other clones in the genre. But this paired with the ability to only see a few feet in front of you, truly makes it feel like you're lost in the dark. Patience and careful observation is often rewarded with no map present, getting lost is a common occurrence. However, to minimize this issue, you have been given the ability to see your previous footprints, which makes backtracking much easier. Learning the layout of a level is only half the battle. On many levels, you must find keys and the locks they open. These keys are often carried on enemies or guarded by traps. To beat Echo Blade, you must open the main gate. There are 12 main gate keys in total, but only 9 are required to beat the game. What makes main gate keys different are the size and how they are secured. Most are obtained by getting to the end of a level or completing a large scale puzzle. One of the biggest threats in Echo Blade, if unprepared, is its bosses. All the bosses are giant versions of the normal enemies thus meaning they have wider hitboxes and larger health pools. The player is given two tools, a sword which is used for your melee encounters, which consists of four attacks based on the direction you are moving. These attacks can be held and even comboed if done correctly. The other tool the player is given being a crossbow, which can be used to shoot enemies, buttons, or at a wall and other surfaces, bouncing a projectile, creating a sound which can illuminate an area for the player to see. But there's a caveat. The crossbow can only hold so many bolts and resupplies are few and far between. Fast traveling is present in Echo Blade. It's done through the beginning of each level and at the end of some. The player can teleport back to any previous level they have been to before. These fast travel spots are marked by bells which can illuminate themselves by the ringing they provide. There's different types of levels. White squares indicate normal levels without any main gate keys. The yellow squares indicate there is a main gate key on this floor and may be a bit more challenging. Black squares indicate the player has not been to this floor yet and is inaccessible until the previous floor is completed or pathway has been found. The hashtag represents the main gate and will need the minimum of 9 gate keys to progress. Okay, so we are now in game and I want to show you some of the mechanics. I mentioned that you can see your feet prints and uh, here you go. Every time you hear your take, take a footstep they leave a footprint. Um, if you stay in a complete darkness, you can't really see anything, but there is a button you can press. For me on controller, it is my R3, so my right joystick. If I press that in, I can make a noise that sends out a burst of sound, and you see that blue bar? That's how long I have until it can reset. 
and uh, obviously walking around produces sound. If you're sprinting, you produce a bit more sound, so you get more area coverage of the sound. There are torches, which the burning of the torch also sends out sound waves. Um, the bells will do that too, but I just wanted to show that off. And for combat, so it's directional, and there's four directions. So you have forward, which is a chop. It'll always be a chop on forward. You have right, which is a left swing. And you have, if you walk left, you get a right swing. If you step back, you get a thrust. And you can hold these to do that. Or you can hold it, not moving, release. Um, now you can combo these. For example, if I do chop swing, I can do poke. Chop swing, poke. So you can combo these. It's a bit tedious, but you can combo them. Um, now, this is the crossbow. And, uh, like I said, you can shoot it. And it sends out sound. And it, like, it sounds like the whole room. So you get a pretty good idea of everything that's going on. Uh, I do believe this might be a boss level, I think. It is not. Okay. Well, here's the bell. Here's the bell, it rings. Uh, when you hear a white bell, that means it's like an interactable item. So that's why I like fires and stuff like that. Now you can't interact with the bell, so I don't know how true that is, but it's supposed to be um, things you can't interact with. For example, there was a, a rat that ran by over there. And uh, we gotta go get the bottom key. Um, here, it's this isn't a hazard, but it is in the game, and it's water. Now, um, there's a couple different hazards. There is uh, lava, which can burn you, gas, which can choke you out to death, and then uh, water. Now, water isn't a hazard in a sense that it's gonna hurt you, but I can't see my footprints when I'm in the water. And it's also really loud, which means uh, the stealth that you can do, which there is stealth, you just have to sneak up on a guy, and if you hit them, they'll instantly die. It's like a sneak attack bonus. But, um, I can't see this. So, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, it's also a lot louder. But, not being able to see your feet, friends, is a bigger problem. Die, you scourge! show that off in my uh my talking alert so I figured I'd do it now. We got another door over here it looks like. Yeah. The thing's telling me to go that way but we don't have the key to go that way. It's a trap. So um the blue represents your character. The red represents danger. Um the yellow orange is you well the yellow is like me. keys and locks. <laughs> And orange is your crossbow. <sighs> also, another thing I forgot to mention, when I'm in the water, uh, my movement is restricted. I can't move as fast. So, that's a thing to worry about. Ow. I think I just walked into a trap. I did. <laughs> show you guys is the perks so there are perks um they get kind of expensive the higher level you go up to so your first ones you want to get is obviously base health increased uh, attack increase and stamina these ones are really cheap they're one point a piece so get those the next ones you're really going to get is health regeneration because you're going to be taking a lot of damage whether you're having to like just walk through a trap or you're you know having to go through a poison area or maybe you're just fighting off of multiple guys at once because I have had it where I've triggered the AI on basically the entire floor and they don't know how to get to me until I get to that room that they were in even though I hadn't been in that room but yet they were all aggroed and I had to fight them all at once and it was like eight dudes versus me and I'm like oh this isn't really fair <laughs> but um their blocking takes less damage this is good if you actually block I got it because I thought I'd use it I don't uh, <laughs> there's uh make less noise running so you can kind of sneak past Quieter. Um, I don't think this actually affects your audio range. I don't have it unlocked because I don't have the points for it. 
um, agility, so your dodges, which I actually hate the dodge in this game. I'll explain that in a bit. Um, and then you can shoot three arrows at once. Um, I'm not sure how useful this is. It might be good. I don't know. Uh, stamina recovery. Stamina is your lifeline in this game. If you do not have stamina, you are going to die. You can't run. You can't block. You can't attack. You pretty much can't do anything. So you need stamina. Stamina is some of the like is the best perks you can get uh, early on. And then increase resistance, so you take less damage from toxin and lava, which is actually really good because certain areas will have to make you go through um, like lava pits and like uh, gas zones. So that's actually pretty good to get. It helps. Um, not that you can't beat the game without it, it's just, it's beneficial. And this one, basically, if you have any health over 5% or something like that, you'll, uh, you won't die. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll survive. So, uh, basically kind of just makes you, like, you get a free, like, um, attack off of death. Now, the problem with that is that, um, the things that are usually going to kill you are either traps that multi-tick. <laughs> or it'll be these guys. Who have like a 17 attack combo right there, like, and they're fast as hell. So, that's why uh, combat is kind of scuffed. And they kind of bug out a little bit, like, they'll like jump on like walls and shit. So, that's a thing to watch out for. Um, but yeah, traps like this that can multi tick, these are the things that'll like, kill you the fastest. So, you want to watch out for that. There's a rat running across the room. But, um,. That's kind of it that I wanted to show you guys. I got some more clips I'm gonna have open, but uh, those are gonna be me being quiet. Uh, I don't have any audio for it. I would have continued doing a voiceover for the entire game and giving a more like uh, from the script, but I can't do that because apparently I can only record so much uh, with my voice in it um, for like a voiceover. So yeah, uh, there's little cool things like this, like tiles that uh, kind of spin around on them. Guy over here. And come soon. And he's dead. But um, yeah. Another thing I do like. Ow. Another thing I do like about this game is um, the sound design. This isn't exactly the best level geared on because of all the um water. But when you hear your like armor just clanking around. Like, for example, if we go here, we go load. We're just gonna go back, and uh, we're just gonna load this. And say we're just in this room. You hear the sound, and you're just walking around. It's a, it's very ominous, and I think it fits the whole aesthetic, because pretty much everything is dark. You can't, you can't really see anything at all. So, you know, when there is something, you know, it's, it's important to be able to see it and hear it. And then you have, like, this ominous sound playing over it, so... And that's kind of what the crossbow does right there. Uh, AIs can hear it too, by the way. That's why he just got lured out. But yeah. It's a cool feature. Uh, I don't think it really benefits the player at all, in my opinion. Um, but it's there. Um, so I said I was going to mention dodging. So dodging, uh, I don't like it because there's two ways to dodge. You have your circles, which you can dodge with, which I would much rather use that way, but it's whatever. Um, or you can double tap your joystick in a direction. The problem is, if you're making micro adjustments, you can accidentally do it. And I have launched myself off of ledges and had to basically restart an entire puzzle because of it. Oh, and uh, that made me remember. Um, so there's collision in this game, so if we pull out our sword back. So we're just gonna swing it. Alright, hold on. So our sword can bang on walls and it'll actually produce sound for us to to see. It's kinda cool. Um but yeah, that's pretty much Echo Blade guys. Um there's a fair few, a uh, fair few amount of levels in it. It might take you anywhere from maybe about four to five hours to complete if you do every single level. Um, and I guess I can talk about the storyline now. The storyline is basically this is a prison, and you're here, and you got you want to escape. You can free certain prisoners. Um, that's up to you. You can also kill them if that's something you wanted to do. That's also in the options. 
Um, and every time you go back to a level, it resets that level, so you have to do it all over again. But if you've completed it, you can just fast travel to the next room that you need to. Unless that floor, for example, has multiple um, ways to go, like different pathways. For example, um, like rooms like this, where there's another pathway I can go, which I haven't been yet, I have to go there. But you need to go there so we can get to the other side. So there are certain pathways that you kind of need to go through. So there's a left and right and you kind of kind of have to have that mentally noted when you're going through the level. But uh, yeah, remember you can use your, your feet to backtrack where you are. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much Echo Blade. Um, it's a pretty cheap game. I think it's worth it if you're you know looking for a Kingsfield game to play or some type of dungeon crawler. This is kind of a it's a it's a it's an okay one. I mean the combat's like not like super thrilling, but it uh it's a good enough game. So that's my review on Echo Blade. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part where I actually put fucking effort into it and now I'm just kind of throwing some shit at the wall, see if it sticks. Um, but yeah, bye. Thanks guys. Ah, well I can see that we are still both trying to escape. Since you can't see, I'm just going to let you know about the lava dumped around this place. The guards use this smelter area for their blacksmithing. So watch your step. The melting lava will probably burn right through your armor. Good luck getting through here. Taste more <laughs> stew. <laughs> You did challenge me. <laughs> Ugh. <sighs>